Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? My name is Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. And this is the R&B Money Podcast, the authority mm-hmm. on all things yeah, yeah. R&B. Mm, it's one of those days. Yeah. Um, we got somebody in the building that has been doing it. Yeah. Been doing it. High level. High level. Mm-hmm. High level. Not just, not just in one space. Not just in one area. As I say from, from the DMV in all areas of this thing, was we're trying to teach you artists to be able to do it all so that your creativity is in the palm of your hands. You control your own destiny. Oh, her, uh, she's going to be around for a long time. <laughs> that was a great use of words. She's making a lot of money. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ladies bring, and gentlemen, bring it give on. it up. Bring it on. For money long. Yeah. Give it up. <laughs> Get it up. That was very good. See this shit. That was amazing introduction. You're doing it. He's, he's really you. good at that. You're really doing it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being good at your craft, taking your craft seriously, perfecting it, and 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 taking whatever time you've needed in whatever space you've been in to do it the right way. Success le- su- success speaks to it. But as people who actually do it, we hear the difference outside of it being amazingly successful. It is, it is rich in the hours that you've put in. Ooh, that was another see, one. I see what you did. You, I didn't even I mean to do that. Did. That's the <laughs> Lord working, th- working yeah, through. Yeah, R&B money. R&B money. R&B money. So thank you. Um, thank you. Well, first, I have to tell this story before. I, I know you didn't ask okay. for it, <laughs> but uh, this is a full circle moment for me because I don't know if you remember this. There was a friends and family Grammy party years ago when I first first came to LA. Before I knew about stylists and makeup and the others, looked very country, right? Um, I come in and I'm overwhelmed immediately. It's all these lights. It's I'm seeing you know people I recognize. I'm like. Oh, you know, yeah. and I walk to the back, and you, and you are standing there, and I just remember saying out loud, "I don't feel like I'm supposed to be here," and you turned around immediately, was like, "No," and you put your hands on my shoulders, like you're supposed to be everywhere you are, and I just remember that that stuck with me forever. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, and then I spent the rest of the night like joking and laughing, dancing with you guys. That was my first Hollywood party. What year was that? 2008. That's incredible. Yeah, that's crazy. That's Long incredible. time ago. I remember what I had on. I had on like this purple play. It was very ugly. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, <laughs> We're going to pull up a, a picture of this. Super outfit. <laughs> I was like 19 or 20. It was very, you know, green. Didn't know anything. And that was my first experience wow. in Hollywood. I Good think you're not an asshole, bro. No, but you know what it is, though? It's like, why be that? There's no reason to be. Why? You, and like, you've always been the same. Every time I see you, even if like I'm just like in the corner, you know, being quiet in the room. Because um, I know how to do that. A lot of people don't you know how to just play their part. Mm-hmm. I've been in many rooms. You've always been the same. I just, I like, I'm, I enjoy what I do. And I want the people around me whether I know them or not, to have a good time, at least in that moment. Because all of this can get, as you're in this room, can get overwhelming. You know what I mean? And I learned that from Jamie Foxx, of always making sure people feel important, involved. You know what I mean? And so, you know, that's, that's something I had to learn. You know what I mean? And wow, that's, that is crazy. I mean, isn't that a trick? That's yeah. a trick to staying around for a long time is, is that you are Absolutely. kind and you make people feel warm and they always remember. I mean, I remember that. People have to choose it. you sometimes in spite of, you know, your gift. 
right? In, in spite of the records selling and the records playing and, and, and all these people showing. Sometimes it's like, you know what? I actually, I, I like them. Let's get but, them. Yeah, they go a long way. It goes a long, long. I have not always had the best record, chart-topping record, the, the million record sale first week. I've had none of that. But I love people. And so if it's, if it's your... If it's your daughter's birthday, call on FaceTime. I'm singing happy birthday. You know what I'm saying? If it's <laughs> if it's your grandma's birthday, I'm gonna give her a lap dance. Like it's all okay, what? grandma. I mean, listen, man, man, I do I do different things to make sure that this money keeps coming in. You understand what I'm saying? Book me at okay. I'm just playing. Anyway, um, <laughs> first of all, shout out to you. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for rolling through. I know you are busy. I know this. But we make time because I know the people you know, and I know you're busy. I mean, it's <laughs> and I'm happy you're could, busy though. Yeah. I could not miss being a part of this. You know, it's important culturally. Look at us being time. part of the culture. Yeah. The culture. This shit, oh, girl. <laughs> yeah, you creating a space for R and B to like flourish. And we're gonna keep growing mm -hmm. it with your help. And so, you know, what we love to do here is. We're about the origin. We're about the beginning. We're about the moment where someone said to you, baby, you got some. Or you realized yourself in the awakening at a moment like, this could be something. Yeah, take us back to Florida. Mm. Come on, let's go back to Florida. Let's go on on back. Uh, <laughs> let's go back to the well, South. I don't know. I, I think I had like a moment. Everybody in my family, my mom could sing. You know, it was a very musical household, so I didn't realize that it wasn't normal. Right. You know. Right. Um, I think I still have challenges with that sometimes. Just being like, oh, it's nothing, you know. Uh, but it was always singing. It was like we used to have singing competitions. I didn't have a choice. I had to sing at the funerals, the weddings, the you know, anthem at the basketball games, at the whatever. Um, my mom used to always volunteer me. You were being prepared yeah. for your moment. Yeah. That's a nice way of <laughs> that, that's a very nice way of looking at it. I used to hate it. Right. right. Just being honest. I didn't like it. Um, you know, if you're from the South, you know, as you come to church on Sunday, you're gonna get that look. Absolutely. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on up here. Get onto the mic. Um I was very sheltered, so I ain't get to do nothing. I couldn't go like past the mailbox. So hmm. it's like you you have the alarm, it's like do do when you open the door. Who is Past that? That's the mailbox. Yes. Could not go out the yard. So I didn't go anywhere. Couldn't do nothing. So I was reading. I was in my room with my little Casio. I was composition notebook, writing songs. Um, and that's what I did as a kid. And so when I finally did leave, or no, what happened was the internet. The internet happened. Love the internet. And I started uploading videos of myself singing on YouTube. Um, 2004 was the first one. And I developed a following from 2004 to 2006 and blew up on the internet before it was a thing. So did you, were you doing it from, did you under, did you start to find an algorithm in a sense? Or did, were you just like, ah, uh, I'm just going to post right now. Or did you start having, like, this is, okay, I'm going to post at 2 o'clock. Algorithm didn't exist. You know then. what I mean? It wasn't, the a, it wasn't a thing. It. Yeah. Right. No, but it literally saying, did you didn't. Eat, like, you, did you, you, could, you, could, you could make, literally, I, like, sent an email to YouTube and made my video go viral. Like, it didn't exist. <laughs> you it was, said, wait, it was wait, not wait, a thing. What you mean? Are you saying YouTube so an email? Yes. <laughs> okay, good, 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 I good, sang good. the dictionary. I sang the first five pages. Like, Aardvark, Aaron, A, B, A, B, Abba. Like, literally. And I started getting some traction. A couple hundred thousand views. So I sent an email. Went to the bottom where it says, like, contact. Yeah, yeah. Of course, that you have to dig to find that now, today. It probably doesn't even exist anymore. But I went, found an email, and pretended to be my assistant. And was like, there's this girl, da 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 da. <laughs> you know, she sang the dictionary. You should put it on the front page. And this is back when YouTube used to have ten videos. That was the front page of YouTube. Right. I know exactly what you're talking about. And then I woke up the next day. It was on there. Off that email. Mm -hmm. It was that easy. 
back then. Oh, yeah. So I didn't, you know, it wasn't a thing. Like yeah. influencer, viral, mm -hmm. that was not a thing. It was just, you know, word of mouth, just like we in this room right now. Oh, have you seen that video? Mm -hmm. And then the next room you go in, you show that room. You know, that's how things got spread back then. So I started uploading videos of me singing. And people start right. taking to it. Mm -hmm. Was it a thing where that response said to you that, you know, oh, well, I could be a, I could be an R&B superstar? No. Or did I mean, it... remember, I couldn't go outside. You still couldn't so, go outside? No. She told moved, you she was in her I damn room. I didn't know room. if it was the same Boom. time frame. I moved out of <laughs> my parents' house when I was 19. I graduated high school at 17. I moved out when I was 19. So for those two years, 2006... 2004, 2006 to 2008 when I first came out here, so four years. Um, the internet was my friends. Like I was, I would upload videos and I would literally make friends with the people who would leave comments. I still talk to some of them today. You really couldn't go outside. Couldn't do so nothing. was there a reason for that? Church? No, I think my mama knew what she was doing when she was younger. I don't know my mom. I'm just saying. What, what, were they heavy in the church? No. No. My mom was just very strict. Like she was like, "You're not about to go outside and bring home no babies." And yeah, I've heard family tree. I've heard the song. I've heard the song. I've heard the song. I've, I've heard it. Oh god, I heard, I heard it. We ain't gotta get into it, but I heard it. She just was very protective. And then also, my stepdad is a police officer, so it's like, you and know. you come from the police too. Oh yeah, yeah. You're not. I couldn't you're not do. Knocking I couldn't do door. anything. You're not knocking on that door. Yeah, I couldn't do. Wow. I couldn't do nothing. They they literally when I went to prom. My mom was in the passenger. My dad was in the driver's seat. They drove me to the door. Opened the door. My dad got out, opened the door. When they came and picked me up, took me to IHOP. Came, got me from IHOP, took me and my date home. My date tried to bend down to give me a kiss. My dad was like, ah. Like, it was that. Couldn't do nothing. Go catch these hands. Little nigga. You get these hot ones. Sound like me. <laughs> Go catch like these me and my hot ones. Listen, I'm, yeah. I'm with all that. Very sheltered. So no idea, absolutely. So you just you're you're just looking for an outlet mm -hmm. and some type of connection to the outside world. That was exactly what it was. It was my little secret yeah. thing. I mean, my best friend uh, at the time, he's a, he's a twin, and so and his brother is a pastor. So it's like he used to come to me and be like. Priscilla, it's really embarrassing. You know, you're online singing and people come up to me and be like, your friend posts videos. You know, it was a it was a thing. Like my own little secret identity, I guess. And my friends didn't like it. You said your friends didn't like it? Mm-mm. Because I was popular on, on the internet. Were you making money? No. Because YouTube wasn't money. They weren't paying. Oh. No, I had about... 15 million streams. Oh, so this man. is just for pure for the love at this point. I mean, no, nobody knew in 2006 that the internet, so much so, didn't know what was going to happen to where when I got a deal, I got signed to Capitol Records in 2008, which is what off of came internet? out here. Off the internet. Okay. They used to delete my videos. Dumbass. So I would post something. And they would delete it because they couldn't monetize they it. They couldn't monetize it. Who and would they, delete it? YouTube? No, the no, label. Capital Records. The label would delete it? Yeah, yeah. The digital yeah. Because they didn't understand it either at the time. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about because at that time I had done a new deal right around that same time. And same thing. Because I got it started off of a street record. Gotcha. And yeah, they were yeah. like, no, nah, yeah. we got to pull this because we can't make money off of it. You know, they didn't look at it as a promotional tool. It. They didn't look at it as a promotional tool. It was a cease and because every Because everything was one tr one, a one track minded back then. Like mm -hmm. in order for... Still it's is, it's but. No, well, I mean, now it's like everything contributes to the pot. Right? Once they, once they started, you know, once they got into this 360 space, then it became like, okay, all things can kind of pour into this. But even like when I had the Shots Fired record, and we're going into TGT. Yeah. We got to shut that down because the focus has to be not thinking that all of that can add to, but yeah, just Your saying brand, I understand yeah. the time. Yeah, he yeah, just, he yeah. just wanted to turn up. He, yeah. he, nigga wanted to be in the club. First of all, <laughs> shouts out to Chris Brown. We were turning up. Okay. 
Okay, I was in the clubs. I was trap, trap, trapping. <laughs> right? I was respected in the trap. You understand what I'm saying? I was the older, the older, oldest person in the trap. The OG. But I was having a good time. Yeah, so I've never had that experience still. What, the club? I couldn't go outside. I don't even know what I'm listening. My friends right now are like, girl, you need to go outside. I, I'm okay with being at home. So I'm listen, I, you know, I already know we shit. I went on Breakfast Club talking about how I had never been even on vacation. So yeah, I'm, I'm all with that. I, he's the yeah, epitome I'm like inside. that for yeah. the club. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's the epitome yeah, of inside. Yeah, Just come to my I, house. I turn <laughs> the house up though. The house no, we pull up and it's like too much to try to get inside. I'll be like, it's fine. Let's just oh, go. Let's I'm the go king home. of that. I'm the king of that. Oh, I, you know what? It wasn't no parking. Where's valet? Ah, mm-hmm. it like, wasn't no parking. I'll see y'all later. I don't get it. I'm chasing the crack. <laughs> He's chasing I'm all chasing of the crack. I'm chasing the crack. If it's a line outside, call me. <laughs> call me. I'm going to be in the line where I can't wait till we get in here. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I just, the thought of people and sweat, and it just doesn't. <laughs> So when you got, when you, you know what, sweat, yeah. now you had to throw sweat in there. Because it'd be um, sweaty, you know. It's, it's, I don't like it's it. liquid excitement. Um, <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> excitement. I've never heard that before. Um, so you, so you, you kind of get out the house, I guess, in a sense. At this point, you get signed to Capitol, and now you're in L.A. L.A., first two years, I went crazy, because you know what happens, like, you know, you don't, you have oh, nothing, and then. Now all of a sudden it's like, um, so I had that. Did you buy moment. rims? Because he bought rims. Oh, I bought he a lot bought of stuff rims. that I don't have nothing to show for. Um, I bought rims and and I tipped really well at the strip club. I did really well. They knew my name. I would walk into the strip club and Michelle Triple like X. Tank is in the building. M- Michelle Triple X and Trish would say, that boy is in here. Oh, that man is in here, and they'd carve out a space for me at the front, and we'd lift this offering. He had, no, a, he no. had no idea he was being scammed. He had no you idea. Know, I'm still did learning. You even care? I don't know about strip club no. culture. I don't know anything. I don't know nothing. I could, I, I could show you. No. No? No. 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 She I'm got okay. enough money. She, I'm okay. She can okay. donate a little offering. I can donate a little offering. The dancers, it's just your ties and offers. The dancers are must, what make this world go round. Okay. Whether they be professional <laughs> or whether they be underground. This is, we'll talk. We're we'll talking about I thought this was R&B money. Yeah, no, it's it R&B. Is. <laughs> it is. No, Listen, no, I wrote my first probably 100 songs when I came to L.A., uh, what's club. that one strip club? It's called Deja uh, Vu. Deja I Vu. That, hold on. Okay, now see, this is what I do know. L.A. strip club's not the same as Atlanta. They were no. they were different. They had the a day. different vibe. Though. They had, they a, had a different we, vibe. L.A. had a time when there was peanuts and legs. There was a These time. These are names of strip clubs. These are names of strip clubs. Oh. Peanuts was the strip club that you couldn't get in. You couldn't get into. Yeah. Men couldn't See, get in. Men couldn't get in. Only women could go. I don't know go. nothing about none yeah. of this. You had to be literally someone oh. to get into If you were a man. Peanuts. If you were a man. It's all women. It's all all women. women. Okay. All women. Yeah. It was a blessed. <laughs> it was a blessed event. <laughs> Only God himself could have curated. Oh, you going to keep going. God got nothing to do with this conversation. You got to relax. All good you and perfect things it. come from the Lord. The Lord okay. made these women. Okay. You're right. You're, You're right about me? that. And he said, what did he say on the seventh day? It is good. He didn't say it? Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> he, he waiting on somebody to hit the organ. I only need one coastline. He, he waiting on somebody to hit the organ. <laughs> okay, oh so, so you like, wild out. You wild out for two years. Wild out. For two years, yeah. wilding, um, working, though. Mm-hmm. And working, you mean like writing? Writing. So well, because, so what happened... Um, I got signed to Capitol, and I'm just like, yay, you know, doing whatever. And uh, I was signed to this management company. Long story short, I ended up doing this very, very pop uh, Katy Perry 2.0 song. And it went top 40, and I went on this whole crazy radio tour. Um, And I'm just happy to be here. Like, I had no idea that I had a choice as an artist that I could say no, I wrote the record, you know, so I'm just like, well, of course it's me because I wrote it. Right. Um, 
horrible. The backlash was that when it didn't do what everybody thought it was going to do, immediately it was like, you know, throw her in the trash. She's no good. Off one song. One song. One song. Yeah. So I never got a second single. Um, the album came out, which please don't go look it up. You know uh, they are. Yeah, like, I'm not gonna tell is. you what People it was. People look up my freaky video all the time. I just I try to get them out to. He it's just so cringe. It's cringy. It's, it's, it's like it's we have those moments. It's part of the path. Yeah, um, but we'll just you know fast forward past this part. And so the record didn't do what they thought it was gonna do, and I was faced with having to possibly go back to Florida, and I really didn't want to do that. So, um randomly ended up on tour on the omg tour with akon and usher hmm. and i was supposed to be riding in the akon had like a um like a t- attachment to his tour bus that was a studio a studio and so i was supposed to be in there riding but it only worked for like a week and then it was broken it was supposed to be getting fixed and yeah those so I just tour ended bus up, studios don't be work yeah, yeah i just ended up being his second assistant so it was like me and his sister Khadi. Uh, and we yeah. were just on tour all summer. And so that summer, I decided, yeah, I don't want to go home after this. I want to keep doing this. And um, this is back when PROs were giving out advances. Mm-hmm. So I got an advance from my PRO, which is like ASCAP BMI. Mm-hmm. And I started nice. writing songs. And CSAC. And CSAC. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah CSAC. That's, that's Sorry. Good. Sorry. Not, you know, they, they be getting left out. They yeah. get left out. I mean, I they got to do more events. They be cutting checks too. Oh, oh. And people, you know. Just... Listen, the Brian Michael Cox events be, you know, he, he stands in front okay, of me. Well, we'll I'm shout sorry. him out. Sitting. Sorry. I didn't... Well, me, me personally, I'm ASCAP. So. Listen, um, I'm ASCAP with you, baby. Yeah. You know, you know. I'm not going to say who I am because, you know, highest bidder. Ah! Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so, About this business. About this business. I get, a, I get a check. I come out here and I start writing. So immediately... I get like who says Selena Gomez, um, California King Bear Rihanna, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, really? Really? Don't Wake mm-hmm. Me Up, Chris Brown, like Madonna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm telling the story. No, no, of, you know. Talk your shit. Keep talk. going. Keep going. So basically, I no, just no, because we're going as you do, we just have to, have to pour something. Keep going. That's, it's I like wrote, you pour, oh pour, the, pour the lick okay. on top. Pour the lick on top. Come on, keep going. So I wrote. You a wrote lot more of than that. I did. Yeah. But, you Tell know, us. I had a string of hits. You know, yeah, but it's because my ratio was so crazy. I would go to the studio. Um, I was going doing five sessions a day, writing at least two songs in every session every day. I was doing that for how long? For about two years straight, Mm -hmm. right? Every day, every single day. From like y'all say, y'all really want this shit. Y'all say, y'all working hard. You working hard? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Do the math. Two songs. In five sessions a day. Every single day. That's 10. 365. They ain't working. Times two. They ain't working. Every day. They're Every not, day. They're not working. Mm-hmm. And then I would come home. I was so broke that I would put the tissue and like the fruit from the fruit bowl in my backpack and come home. Oh, it's, it's yours. Like, You're at the studio. Yeah, but I mean. <laughs> no, I get it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That's how I was grocery shopping at the studio. At the studio. Um, and I did that for two years, living at the Oakwoods over there on Barham. So Oakwoods on Barham. you hadn't done a publishing deal at all? Yes, I had. So you had a publishing deal and you had done a deal with the PRO too? I had a publishing deal and a record deal that were together. Never do that. Ah, um, come on, come on. Give, give them the information. Give them the information. My just first four R&B deals Money podcast. Were, first of all, I've been doing this since 2008. So that just lets you know I've been doing this for long enough to have like renegotiated my deals Mm -hmm. several times but my first deal was horrible and i had a production company and my my production company's lawyer made more money than me on my first deal most people's do yeah Mm -hmm. so it wasn't just you most mm -hmm. people's do i mean you know you don't know any better yeah um so yeah that was i have i've been ran out of money like i ran out of money the first six months so tell me this in all transparency Mm -hmm. did you read the contract yeah, but I don't know lawyer jargon. No, no but I'm just know, saying because absolutely because some it. people don't. Yeah, some people oh, were yeah, straight to the did you read it or did you read it to understand it? Ah. I read it. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. But also, I read it at 2 a.m. in the Kinko's. <laughs> I'm <laughs> signing this. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Show me where the money part at. Just, just highlight the money part. Okay. Right, that know, works. Like, that yeah. works. The production company dude was sitting there like, <clears throat> let me know if you want me to explain something. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, yeah. clearly you know that I can't understand this. And I don't know that you know that. I'm just excited. Um so you know, hey, I was nineteen. But we like we like to we like to paint that full picture. Yeah, we like people to have an understanding of how these things work, and hopefully, the Priscilla that's coming, the money that's coming, mm-hmm. sees this and says, "You know what? I'm not gonna sign it at two a.m. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna wake up tomorrow in the I'm Kinkos. A, can which, I leave which, the Kinkos? Well, which is now the you know FedEx? I mean? Because that's in hindsight, FedEx, right? The me today now understands that I would not be here if it wasn't for Kinko's. without those moments. Okay. And sure. I think honestly to be real there's unknown unknowns, things that you have no clue that you don't know. Mm-hmm. There's things that you know you don't know mm-hmm. and there's things you know you know. Most times when you're 19, like I'm still learning every day yeah. how the music business works and how and the if when, you know, like which is basically like until a situation happens, you don't understand how it can apply to you. Mm-hmm. So there's just certain things that time and experience cannot, you can't cheat it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And also, I'm not condoning it. It's wrong to take advantage of people. But you have to look at it like now on the other side of it, doing what we did independently and being owning the label and mm-hmm. paying for everything and hiring people. I understand the business side and the of investment. like when I pay for something, you damn right I own it. Yes, right. I do. Yeah, you and know? you want to know what the RI is. You want to know what your mm-hmm. return of investment is, and, sure. you, and you want to put yourself in a more advantageous spot when you're willing to put up your money. Yes, and, and, and the then thing, you understand where the labels are coming from. But the thing that right. gets lost <clears throat> is the human factor, mm-hmm. and people start looking at you as product and not living, breathing you know, essence. And that's the problem. It's like, we never want to make people feel like, you know, a common struggle that as black people, we understand you want what I can offer you, but you don't want me. Mm. So we don't want to keep doing that. That's the pattern that I would, I would like to break. I refuse to sign people if I can't really take care of them. You can't really invest in them. Yeah. Wholeheartedly. I think that, you know, I think that the sensitivity part in that aspect kind of, went out the window when there were no longer creatives in charge Mm -hmm. because creatives have a certain sensitivity to two artists, two producers, two writers as the human beings that they are and how personal this is to them. Because this is, I mean, we operate it from a business standpoint because we know the business now, but in, in, in reality, this is personal. Mm -hmm. This is what I have to do. I was born, designed to do this. Mm -hmm. And anybody trying to take this away from me in any way, shape, or form, we got to have a problem. It does begin to feel a little invasive. Like, you know, you're trying to get in between me and Source. Like, you know, I was reading this book. I believe it's called, it's either... It's called The Secret of Secrets or The Magic in Your Mind, but it's the same author, U.L. S. Anderson. And uh, it talks about your talent in a way that really resonated with me. It says that the talent is God and his opportunity. uh, You using your talent is God's opportunity to shine through you. So it's like when other people try to manage that, Mm -hmm. you're trying to control God. You know, mm. and you can't do that. That's why it feels so wrong. It's like I'm channeling. I'm just free, you know, free flowing, whatever. Hit, you know, sometimes it don't even make it to my brain. It just yeah. comes out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. Um, and you come in trying to tell me what to do with it. I don't even know what's about to happen. How can you tell me what to do with this that I'm just the vessel for, you know? It's weird. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think people really respect what we do, like the gift 
because it is a gift. It's like they don't respect it enough. There's not enough reverence for it. Because if there were, you wouldn't judge. Like, I don't judge people's expression. I might not like it. But, you know, who am I to say that it's whack? Right. You know? But I think that it goes into the position that you play in it. Because we all understand as creatives that we can't do the business of it by ourselves. We can create. Mm -hmm. We can make the song. We can sing the song. We can produce whatever. All of those parts. But to actually do the business side of it and, and help it become... And I, and I use the word help very, very strongly because that, that is what we do need in our business. We do need people's help. We do need business minds. We need their help. We don't always need their opinions and all the other things that go into that, but we need their help to get it to where we, we ultimately want it to be. And I think what happens is what comes along with that help is... If I can give my opinion, they feel more they feel more vested. They feel more like they were a part of it than just <laughs> I just grabbed it with something you already had and I did a little bit and people like to be able to say, No, 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 no. You know what? I, I told them to turn this word into that word or Listen. you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I helped them create this has plan. Many fathers, failure is an orphan. If I could make a list of all the people who made hours and hours successful? Oh yeah, I'm finding out new names. Who? <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, that's so crazy. Yeah. But then you know, my Virgo mind, I'm like, well, maybe you did right. do something, right. and thank you. But I know what I did, you and did. I know, you like, did. you know, I mean, uh, another. I, I have analogy all the time. It's like, okay. If I plant the seed, I harvested the fruit that the seed came from. I planted the seed. I tilled the soil. I watered it. I fertilized it. I went out there and tended the field. I can't take it away from the sun that the sun shined on it and, like, yeah. helped it grow. Yeah. And I can't take away from the rain and the clouds that they rained, you know. I'm not going to take that from you. But if I didn't put it down there, it wouldn't, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like that. It's like... It all works together. It's all symbiosis. I'm not mad. But it do be kind of be corny sometimes. Like, you didn't help me. It's, you it's, didn't really help it's me. It's a form of currency for them. Yeah. Yes, social it currency. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it form is. of currency to be able to, you know, when you are the conversation, to be able to be a part of that conversation. It's so frustrating, though, man, because it's like, like you said, I've been doing this since 2008. Begging, literally begging people, like, please, like, I'm telling you, just let me just give me a shot. You know, I got these songs. Yeah. And I wasn't ready. I didn't have the vision that I have now. Um, but I've seen people help people with less. Of course. You know? of course. So I just didn't understand why. Why not me? Like, you know, it took for me to step outside, go find people who weren't even working in the business anymore. Mm -hmm. And she's like, hey, would you come back and. You yeah, know, and rock with me. Like, help me out. Like, let's start. Let's do this thing together. January 2020 started the label. My husband, two old friends of mine, Rashad. He knows. Like, I met, I know him since I was 17. I had to go outside the business to find help because for 10 years, every time I would get the balls to try to make a project, I write these songs and I get a phone call. Oh. Blank artist wants the song. Yeah. Why are you playing my records? So how did they even hear? They it? weren't. You weren't even sending them out for no, people to the get them that way. The producers were. Ah. Yeah. Saying, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I work on your stuff. Yeah. yeah. Come on. And I speak show on, speak, up. Speak, speak on that. Because I knew you had that. the gas, but also there's a the, the part that people really don't know is that the producer, for some odd reason, has the right to move your records. Without the writer's permission. Well, I'll say this. They don't really have the right. They, what they have is the piece, the master, right? Because there's the, the copyright, <laughs> there's the copyright the which is the top line. Mm -hmm. And the writer is not a part of the master. The, the master. artist is. Yeah. So the master is what's being sold. So that's where the power lies. But that's, the the producer. that's what the producer and has. The producer but they, has. they don't have permission to take my song. 
they, you don't. They technically do. Well, if you have, it's the, not morally right. I'll say this: as as a songwriter, you don't have the nuts to go and tell an A list artist, "Yeah, you pay for that beat. I'm taking my song and I'm, I'm doing out. something else with it." You yeah. don't have the nuts to do that because if you do that, you will never get called again. And the peanut is so so scraps what you're making that you just be happy to get a chicken wing. You know? But technically... No, 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 no. If he gets full tech, you're absolutely right. You don't the have permission. You no, didn't no, have no. my permission. Everybody has to be in line. Because think it, about it. But, it but, think about it, though. If I, if, I, if, if, if you say... If you say... Like, he only, what does he owe you? He owes you, your, he owes you your publishing, right? Okay, if he... If, to take away payment. You don't got to pay me nothing. If you get a sync license, don't you got to get it cleared? Don't you, who, what's the split? Absolutely. Who's going to approve the split? You approving my split? You don't have permission to do that. It gets tricky. It does. It does. It does get tricky. It does. But and, in, and more it, ti- in more time, in more time, more more times than not, a producer has moved the song without a writer even knowing it. Way more so than a writer moving a song. I think without a producer. And this is also, you know. Psychology comes into play here because most of the time, the, I'll say it this way: there aren't a lot of female producers. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of female songwriters. There's male songwriters too, but there's a lot of female songwriters. That dynamic plays a part. And I think it's also how you identify it because you take somebody like Missy Elliott, mm-hmm. but she Missy but Elliott, she ain't recording on your stuff. It, but but when Missy Elliott steps in the room, she's automatically a producer. Yeah. But she also had the protection of her co-writers to make sure that she could be established like that. It's it's a partnership. Well, it was her yeah. it was also her success and her under, understanding the, uh, the the power imbalance or balance and creating like think about this like we always talk about how do you make a record? Who is singing the record from top to bottom and making it what it is. Right? And so some producers some beat makers aren't producers. Mm-hmm. Most. They're, most. Aren't. They're beat makers. Mm-hmm. Right? And then someone like Money Long comes in and takes that beat and turns it into an entire song from top to bottom where you, for line for line, with the artist and this, no, do it that way, make it like this. Ooh, can you drop the beat out and put that here? Okay, yeah, if you could just make the bass do something really crazy right here when we get to the bridge, and now you've pre- produced... Mm-hmm. The song, mm-hmm. which I think more songwriters, as they start coming to the table and sitting down at that front desk, need to be mindful of. Well, I'm just going to speak from my seat, mm-hmm. is that doing all of that and doing all the backgrounds and arranging and vocal producing and the artist leaves all my vocals on and I'm not getting a sound exchange. All these things, right? Yeah. The issue, my issue is that I did not have the support of my co-writers mm. to make sure that when the business goes down, yeah. because they're not calling me, they're calling you, producer. Mm. When the business goes down, you make sure I'm straight. Business affairs telling me I'm not a producer, even though I produced. Mm. That was my struggle. Like That happened to me so many times where I would wake up and I would have a top 10 song on iTunes and didn't even know. It just happened. It just happened? We're not going to talk about it. Literally woke up. My name is in the credits. So in that, like you said, because at the, at the space you're at now, how, for you personally, how do you get in front of it? I just stop. I'm not going to allow myself to be taken advantage of that way anymore. Meaning you won't do any writing for anyone? No, else. I'm not. Because if this is my superpower, mm-hmm. why am I sharing my superpower with people who don't respect me, who don't care about me, who um, are essentially, you know, the villains in my story? Why am I going to keep complaining about it? Just stop showing up. Just use the superpower for people who respect are willing to me. pour into me. Right. And I've, all I've ever wanted was to be respected and to, like, enjoy my gift. Yeah. So I would say... Why not create your super team with your superpower? Yeah, it's in the process. That's yes. you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Instead of you know, because I would personally, because I'm yes, you're my friend. I've known you for years, but I'm also a fan of what you do. 
as an artist, but also as a songwriter. So to hear you say, I'm just going to stop, that's disheartening to me. To you mean you know what I mean? Because just the word. I'm a songwriter too. Word. We're all songwriters. Yeah. When we stop doing those things, like I've had people tell me this when it comes to me and being an artist. They're like, Well, nigga, you don't want to sing. I feel that way about songwriters too. Well, just just raw, you know, from my heart. There are a lot of people who have been in my story over the years. Not one person has made sure that I was protected. But now you're the protector. Yes. So if it continues, it's my fault. I agree. I'm not blaming anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm not mad at anybody. Mm -hmm. But there are people who are in position. You know, I have a publishing deal. I had lawyers. I had managers. They They wanted the money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah, I can't be mad at that. It's a business, but I'm a human. Absolutely, yeah. first. So, first. but I think I have moves. PTSD. I'm not gonna lie. No, no, no. I you, you, have, you definitely have it. But I think, you know, people who are are damaged in such a way only really have two options. They can either either repeat the cycle, or change or, it. Mm-hmm. or, or change grow. It. And find a better way to do things. And because you've and, and earned, changed the world. you've earned your spot now. Yeah, absolutely. you've earned your spot. Like we, we can we can go down the list of our own experiences or other people's experiences of that first bad contract, that first whatever these these situations. Somebody saying they wrote a song, you don't even remember them being in the room with you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, what I mean? it's just mm-hmm. it gets tricky. We've we've seen it all, and what we understand is that. Our talent kept us here. Our gift kept us here. Our, you know, um, our personalities. And just like you said, you've been, you starting off this episode the way you did, I would have never expected you to say that. I've never expected you to say that. And it just, it already, it was just a good feeling for us, for even to be that person or to be one of the people there that made you feel welcome. So we look at it like, okay, when we get our shot, mm-hmm. we will do it differently. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like you're at the space now for sure, where you can do it differently. Mm-hmm. Yes. There's a responsibility that comes along with that. Mm-hmm. And, it's gonna, and I'm going to tell you because we deal with it. <laughs> There's some motherfucking headaches that come along <laughs> with trying to do right and help people out. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. Because some yeah. people- They don't get it. Not even that they don't get it. Some people like getting beat on. Yeah. Unfortunately. I mean, you know, just I just had this conversation last night. I had I had a moment yesterday morning where I was like, Am I really ready to accept that I don't have to have drama? <laughs> Am I ready yeah. to accept that I can live a soft life and have like luxury and like have success and not be like I just, oh, learned that term. I just learned that term. <laughs> soft life. The soft life. Just learned that soft term. Life. I mean, yeah, I like, am I, am I, am I really okay with not feeling guilty that I bust my ass and did it? And like, because I had some people literally quit like two months before my song blew up. Oh shit. Quit. Am I okay with that? I'm like, uh huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, I really. I'm okay. Like, I'm fine. You know, I don't have any grudges. Um, and it's like I'm breaking this cycle of, you hurt me, you did me wrong. Because I did tell those stories. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, wanting somebody to just be like, dang. Yeah. You know, pat me on the back. Yeah. But now it's like, well, what does the next 10 years look like yeah. for me? Mm-hmm. Um, and it started with me just deciding to invest in myself. And then, you know, I'm still, like, before we started filming, I said I'm I'm, recal- I'm still recalibrating to what life means now after, you know, the song blew up in six days. Yeah. It only took six days. It took me about uh, 10 seconds of listening to Mike J sing it. Because I, I was completely in the you And listen, we'll, we'll tell the story. But I was completely in the dark. I It goes from me... Going on Mike J's page and him singing, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, yeah. Ten, maybe 10 seconds. Yeah. I was like, man, what the fuck? I called him. I'm like, hey, nigga, 
what the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, nigga, you ain't heard this record. This is Money Long. I'm like, Money Long. Wait, wait, Money Long. Priscilla? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's yeah, like, okay. yes, nigga. I'm like, no fucking way. That's a reaction that 90% because everyone knew you are, you know what I mean? From from our within our industry, you are you've ex, you had already established yourself as such a force, mm-hmm. and had so many great records that it was already like, oh yeah. But no, I hadn't heard it. You know what I mean? And it and me calling you and being like, listen, you got something. This this is whatever you do with it, you got it. It's special in ten seconds. It's crazy too because at that particular moment we were fatigued. I'm we were, sure we were so fatigued. We had been doing it for two years, and we were just like, "You need another deposit? How much?" You know, yes. yeah, I was yes. trying to decide if we were going to go to radio, and it was just like. Oh. So you were funding all of this through your songwriting. Yes. Through the money you've made songwriting. Mm-hmm. For, you said for you said so Two years. a decade worth a decade of work. though for like ten straight years though because mm-hmm. you were putting out you were putting out projects in mm-hmm. those times. There was only one year that I didn't have any placements, but I had a, a hit song every year for like nine years. God was making sure you was all right. Yeah. Champagne, this more champagne. Yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely more it's champagne. More champagne? Okay. I'm sure no, they got just, some more. Sure. Tank yeah. keeps some champagne. She, keep a little toast. She's gonna nine, keep pouring nine it too. years in the role. Yeah. Of hit record. Of I hit don't records. Think people understand that that's not normal. That is not normal. That's not regular. That is not normal. Shit. Okay. That's I'm, not I'm normal. Drink no, too. I definitely feel um, blessed to be able to say that because, like, you know, even I still haven't celebrated anything. Um, I very much love my work. I love what I do. Mm-hmm. Like, I, you know, I woke up one morning and I was feeling sad. I told my husband, I was like, yeah, I need to, I need to get, write some songs. I need to. I need to just throw up on the microphone. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because I feel bottled up and I'm depressed and I'm sad and I don't like that. You know, I need to get let it out. Um, and so I tend to do that. I tend to throw myself into the work and um, at least the part of it that I know I can nail, mm-hmm. which is I, I consider myself a recording artist, not necessarily an entertainer yet. I'm working on that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um do you want to be? Time. Yes, of course. Do you want to be? Mm-hmm. But because Cause some, cause artist development don't. doesn't exist, so I'm literally developing in real time in public. So like my first time was the BET Awards. That was literally like, well, my second show. The first show was my Valentine's Day show, which was a room of 300 people. Mm-hmm. And then, then BET, BET Awards, Awards yeah. and now right. Soul Train Awards. You yeah. know, so it's like, yeah. it's like I'm learning on the big stage. Um, and I'm okay with that. I'm in a place where, you know, I got memed and I was like at first like, oh, but it kept the record alive yeah. for another six months. Like yeah, the conversation. Yeah. So it hasn't even been a year since the song came out. It'll be the anniversary is on November 19th. So all of this stuff has happened in a year. I'm still trying to accept it that you can relax. Yeah. You don't have to like yeah. hustle. You don't have to... Um, feel the anxiety because I'm still getting used to like going in the studio and being okay with writing a verse and a chorus and that's it. That's it. I don't have to write 10 songs yeah, a yeah. day. I'm still trying to get used to that. It's very uncomfortable feeling. Yeah. Well, but, you're not, you're not, I mean, it's a beautiful space because you're not under duress anymore. I just said that yesterday. I yeah. said, Imagine what I'm going to be able to do Hmm. because Mm -hmm. from 2006 to 2020, I was under duress and I did all of that stressed out, sick, broke, fighting, you know, getting sued, like all these things. Now I'm finally free and I can like experiment and hire an orchestra and you know, play with me, get a band. Like, I've different. never done any of that. It gets it gets different in that space. I'm excited. Like, uh, like, the t- like, the way you've, the way you've evolved under pressure, coming out on the other side of that, you're a completely 
different monster. And prepared. Oh, prepared you know, for anything. Prepared. Most importantly to me, grateful. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, it, this, I really was like getting sick. I lost my voice 2018. I could not sing. It's like I used to be like a belter, mm -hmm. like Broadway, um, you know, church growling belter. And then lost my voice. Dealing with like lupus, respiratory issues, all this stuff, sinus issues. Could not sing. That's why I sing the way I do now, because I was trying to sing around my injuries. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where the yes, like the very you know, whisper thing. That's where that comes from. And I literally just got my voice back like last week. I went to the ENT, and they like poke some holes and poke some holes. Mm -hmm. Apparently, my sinuses were completely closed. So I have a deviated septum, mm. which I'm still trying to figure out if I'm going to go do the surgery or not. I've been having, what, what was Dr. Chris doing to me? He was doing the uh, cracial, fanny, cracial cranial facial release. What's that? Where they put, they blow up balloons. Oh, I've seen that on Instagram. All, yeah. Oh my gosh. Doesn't that hurt? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you, what it was, that? and it was working. It was just, it got to be a lot for me because, you know, it was all trying to fight a few different things for me. It was my sinus thing that is for me every day and, of course, losing my hearing. So it was trying to figure out all of those things and putting my, you know, my, my, my bone skeleton back in place. You know what I mean? That so it, it just, the process just became a lot for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so when you say the ENT start poking holes and stuff, I'm like, I'm like, and you back? I'm like, that's exciting. Listen. I'm telling you, woke up. So <laughs> it's funny because the Maxwell Challenge was a thing for a while, right? Mm -hmm. I literally used to wake up and exercise my falsetto and my whistle because I had, a, I used to have a whistle. I used to have a whistle too. So I used to wake up first thing in the morning, raw, out the bed. Woo! That's how yeah. I would yeah. warm it up. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it for four years. The next day after... I came from the, the very ADT. next day. Very next day, woke up. Got right to it. I was like raw out the bed. Man, that's crazy. I ain't brushed my teeth yet. And I need I can... to know who you went to. <laughs> it's, right. it's a black doctor. His name is Madison Richardson. I need to. I woke. It's funny because I woke up out my sleep. I'm in this place right now where I get everything I say, so I had to be very careful where I place my energy. But I had had the thought where I was like, wouldn't it be nice? to when you're having an issue, call the doctor and be seen immediately because that's when the problem is existing. Mm -hmm. Instead of two weeks later, right. and it's yeah. gone. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, I'm trying to explain it to you. So I had that thought, fell asleep, woke up out my sleep and was like, Google a doctor. I Google best ENT in LA. And uh, this place popped up two miles from my house. And called. She took me that same day, um, and I saw this doctor, and he's amazing. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, that's Twenty incredible. minutes. He's just like. Come to see you, doc. <laughs> I'm going to see you, doc. <laughs> yeah. Just nobody has nobody has the answers yet. <laughs> it sounds like he nobody does. has answers. I'm like, like I'm, I'm maybe seventy percent of the singer I used to be. But it's, it's really all, frustrating when you can't absolutely. do what you want to do. It's all in this sinus area. Something is blocking me and 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 messing with my mid range. Mm. Just messing with. Oh well, yeah, I'll, send, I'll give you the recommendation so you can. You puking nice. for a Go reason. see Lord. him. So tell us this. Mm -hmm. The difference between having hit records for someone else than having your own hit records. Um, Have you? Have you experienced it yet? Just the feeling no. of it yet? No? No. I haven't been outside and hearing the way people be in the club. Yo! No, I haven't. Yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't experienced it yet. You got to go outside. What? A, we got to get her <laughs> outside. Have you have not been to the strip club when they play wow. that song? Get, it's blowing my mind that they play that in the strip club. They are club, dancing to, to this song, Jay. And you know this. I haven't been. No, I, no idea what that feels like. Gotta see it. I barely felt it at BET because I had the in ears, you know, so you can't hear you nothing. Can't really feel, uh, yeah, yeah, can't hear yeah. nothing. And then because like I said, that was like not only was it my first TV thing, it was like my first big performance. 
I have I zone out so that I don't freak out, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. And it was so much stuff going on. It's like people don't realize it's like 30 people talking in my headphones. The air is blowing right down on you right before you go on stage. I don't do all this warming up. It's blown. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. They trying to talk to me, ask me stuff. I'm like, please don't say nothing to me. I'm trying to, yeah. you know, I'm trying to remember my steps. It was just a lot. So, yeah. You you have you you know what you're giving you're giving me painter right now. You're giving me uh, any 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 like anytime you see a painter, a, a really good you know artist on like a movie, it's always him and his easel and he's he's standing there <laughs> looking at it. He's never you know he's he never gets a chance to really look at the outside world and understand you know how it's affecting affecting the outside world and how much the contribution is is revered and and, and appreciated and, and he's but he just he just keeps painting and, and and for him he's never he's never satisfied like people always ask me like what's your favorite song i said i haven't written my favorite song yet because i'm still like in this mode where i'm painting i'm just i'm just still painting but it's like I now take the moments to to go outside and see what has grown from from the soil and from the seeds that I've been able to plant and it's given me it's given me a great perspective. I have to go get some sweat on you. Get to go get some <laughs> <laughs> go I get think some also sweat. too because I used to be super gullible. Mm-hmm. And I'm very like uh, hyper alert of like, are, do you do you really believe that or are you just saying that because you know what I mean? Are you being nice to me because of the song? You're an overthinker, you, is, is what you're saying. I mean, I just don't know. Like, I literally am. I will believe you because I'm not a liar. I don't. You know, if I don't like something, I'll be like, you but know. you don't have to invest anything in order to accept something. True. I'm. I mean, I'm learning. I'm trying to break cycles. I'm, yeah. I have definitely some PTSD from just the way that I was so inviting and so trusting, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know, got hurt. Um, not blaming anybody. Just saying that's what happened. Yeah. And so now I'm just kind of like, mm, I don't really know how to engage with you. Thank you. You know, I say thank you a lot, but I don't. It kind of just kind of like. Listen. Hits the wall and slides down. Listen, and, you know they love you for sure. They love you for sure. Mm. I it, it is it is real. They love you. Well, you hopefully, work I hard can as continue hell. giving them things that they love to feel. You, you are. That's what you do. You're a pro. Yeah, and I mean, it's not like you're just a song. No, you you're, know what I mean. Like you're you're a real artist. You're a real artist. You know what I mean, and you have, and you're building your own catalog for yourself, mm-hmm. you which is I mean? hard to do. Yeah, those records are those records are real that you're writing for mm-hmm. yourself as well. Like he said, which is hard for you to do, especially when you get your your first big break as a songwriter, because those records sometimes can go to anyone, mm-hmm. but your records feel very personal. Time Machine feels very personal. You know what I mean? Plot Twist was very personal, which is hilarious to me. That record's hilarious. Thank you. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? And the I baby look like your brother. <laughs> <laughs> just be, I just, I just be, be saying. saying. Oh my God, like, damn. I do. I but just like blurt it out. But that's what we need. Yeah. Those, are, those are the records that we need. We need reality. Mm-hmm. We need reality. And not, you know, I, I think it started to be a, a thing in, in R&B music where it wasn't real enough to me. Someone, That's why rap killed us, for sure. You know what I mean? And I, I, I think rap has gotten a little too real. Mm. Got a little too real. It's, you know what I mean? It's a little wild. It's a little wild. I think, you know, the young fellas need to calm down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but R&B just felt fairy ish for a minute. Mm-hmm. It didn't feel like, oh, I really went through that. I'm yeah. really going through that. Mm-hmm. Or, damn, I probably shouldn't say that. Oh, Cause this how the girl, no, yeah. no, but I'm saying when you listen to a song and someone says something and how how it made them feel mm-hmm. and you're like shit, damn. I love that. One Maybe of my I, favorite you know Summer what I mean? Walker. What um what won me is she had this song. 
I'm listening to it and it was like, I just might be a hoe. <laughs> that joke made me bust out laughing. I said, yo, she really said that. It's a real thought. It's a real thought. It's a real thought. A and I, real and I, thought. I think you fit perfectly into the space of being able to paint pictures of reality. Mm-hmm. Of what a lot of people, absolutely women for sure, because that's what you're you're writing from a space, from a, from a woman's perspective, but just people, period. Mm-hmm. Like you, you've done really well, in my opinion, of really breaking things down in layman terms in your records. Thank you, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Great writing. Yeah, great, great writing it's, too. It's, you, it's you, amazing to hear that. Kind you're of singing. Thing. You're not like, you know, you're singing. You're yeah, you can do it. Shit. Well, can I say my favorite Tank record is maybe I deserve. Mm, you gonna go back? I mean, <laughs> you gonna go back? <laughs> It's just incredible. We need more songs like to the that. Young, to the young, the young tank. Now listen, that was that was an ex, an experience that when people when people say like people say you need to do another maybe I deserve and I'll be like I'll never go through that again. <laughs> it was really emotions. It was that I wrote what happened word for word. Oh wow! That's what happened. That's not a song. That is that, that is me documenting life life's events. That's why I hit like that. That's why I hit like that. And I will never write Maybe I Deserve Again. I'm never going to be there. Now, it then graduated to Please Don't Go. Mm. And then, you know, graduated to me being able to own a song like Next Breath. But never the same thing. You never go. On. And then, you know, we for, for shits and giggles, we write I Deserve. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just mm-hmm. to have fun with it. But... Maybe I deserve for you to cheat on me? Nah, we're not writing that no more. I'm a grown you, ass man. Okay, I have a question. I wish you would. Do you, you know how many um, bills I pay around here? You know, cheat on me? Do you believe that if you sing something that you're calling that energy in? Absolutely. Oh, really? That's My wife struggles with that. I sing about sex all the time. Oh, I don't believe that. And so it's you like mm-hmm. you can, that is real energy you have to think about this think about what's happening think about the atmosphere that your songs are creating mm-hmm. for people when you're not around mm-hmm. and when those people come oh, up they to tell you, me yeah, they come oh my god girl i was please don't tell me that i do not like your it, it, <laughs> you're, you owe us child support <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it's it's real because what we do is spiritual if done the right way, it is spiritual. Like it is, you know, it it is from the heavens. It is like connecting truly is me is my heart speaking to yours, which is like why a song like maybe I deserve mm-hmm. can connect. Not a great track, not the greatest melody. Didn't reinvent the wheel in writing the words. Just all of that together, and the spirit and the truth along with it. Mm. I, I believe in the energy of songs, mm-hmm. not necessarily the words. And the reason why I say that is because we can vibe with songs that are not in English. And people who are don't speak a word of English can sing our songs word for word. I believe the energy. Like, you know, so it's like if I'm listening to something and it makes me feel heavy, I'll be like, mm. you know. Mm-hmm. But I've always struggled with that as a songwriter for other people. Um, trying to place songs on other people, making things as ambiguous as possible, not using any pronouns, you know, you, I, not he, she, us, they, our, because um, certain artists really believe, like, if they sing about a breakup, you know, they're going to break up with their... I, I, I believe in all of it, mm-hmm. right? Nothing is, nothing is out of reach, if you're asking me. It is all possible. I'm just curious. Yeah. No, it's all possible. Because I don't think like that. Like, plot twist is not real. It's like, it, I just made it up. So you say. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. What is, as we talk about the cycle and, and changing things and creating your own things and all of that, what is, what is now and next for you? Because you've, I mean, you've been at, you've, you've been at the height as a songwriter, um, and now you're at the height as an artist, and and what do you build from here? Uh, I think I'm just trying to connect back to like my human self, like 
Um, I want to experience the best things that the earth has to offer, um, be the highest, best version of me, use my gifts to travel around the world and make memories and experiences with my friends and family. Um, you know, we were just talking about last night, like, I would love, like, let, let's go make an album in the freaking Sydney Opera House and, like, you know, just let's just explore and have fun. Um, I am working right now on my next project, uh, projects, mm. um, cause I don't, I don't just, I can't, it's not possible for me to do one thing at a time. Like all the music that you guys heard from me up until this date, I made it all around the same time. It just ended up on different projects and came out at different times, but okay. it was only about three weeks of writing. And then, yeah, I've been in the studio for about nine days. We got like 40 songs. Um, Oh, yeah, you be you doing too much. much. <laughs> I don't like attitude. Get into it. Nah, it's it's just stream of consciousness, you know. Like last night, I think I wrote f- five songs last night. No, I did. But last no, night. they're not. What did you do that? What? I did cardio. <laughs> did. I did cardio. But also cardio. putting it into context, you know, I will go live. And then I'll just, you yeah, know, yeah. You're special. Hustle, 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 hustle for You're like three talent. weeks, yeah. And then go live, go live, yeah. And like you know, yeah. So that's what I'm doing, and I will. The I still am trying to navigate the independent flow with major label structure, um, it's because tough. we want the support yeah. and we want the, you know, the billboards and the relationships right. that they can get like the reason why I can be driving down the street and people recognize me through my windshield now Mm -hmm. is because of that space that they help me you you get to to. um but the flow and the reason why I am successful the to the uh to the capacity that I am right now and a part of the conversation constantly is because of quality and quantity Mm -hmm. So we don't let too much time pass before I'm re-entering your mind uh, with a new thing. Mm -hmm. And we make sure that we break it up in bite-sized pieces. So there's a teaser, there's the socials, there's the video content, there's photos. And if you notice, every time I post something, I use my own music because it's like it takes a minute for, you know, um, and I could be saying this wrong, but like in the marketing world, you need to see something seven times before you digest it as, like, real. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just am always constantly pushing the thing. And then in another two weeks, all right, cool. Let that take off. About three months from now, we'll come back and check on it and see. You know, and it's just planting all these different seeds. So in order to keep that flow, there's a certain t- pace that I have to have with the label to, like, hold their hand. But I very much am still independent. Mm-hmm. thinking right um you know it's fun it's it's gonna be fun um i have a lot of music and i have i did a tv show in new orleans this july so that comes out at the top of the year yeah. i want to get into acting yeah. and come on yeah. do all those come things yeah, do, do all, all of it. here do all of it yeah, yeah. Do all of here every time of him over over where man as you know as 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 my mentor denzel um <laughs> washington would say um, you know, everything on the table is available for consumption. And so <clears throat> within your you success. Movie, you got a movie coming out we huh? don't know about? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been in a few BET movies and TV One movies <laughs> lifetime uh, that have gone to the top of, you know, whatever, whatever that shit is. Um, <laughs> so, you know. I'm, I'm well known in those areas. Uh, okay. You know, okay. you get stopped in the airport. That yeah, yeah. No, I guess, okay. you, know, you, know, you know that means something. Yeah. People yeah. stop, stop me. You in the airport, no, no, they, they stop me like this. You, I don't know. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we working on it. We working on it. You That's know what I'm saying? Put amazing. the name with the face. Oh, um, but no, I'm, I'm, the acting thing is 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 amazing. It's and it's told. It's so different. And such a breath of it's fresh air. So much more fun. Oh, it's fun. It's a lot more work, but it's so much it's more fun. fun. It is because it's, it's not. It's like it's no stress. It's it, very professional. It's, once you get into the space, there's no more business being done. Mm-hmm. It's just the art. Mm-hmm. I don't have to think about 
the promoter, the back end. Or the, I, feel like, I feel like a true artist. Yeah. 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 It's like, what's said. my motivation? <laughs> How am I? Where am I coming my from? Arc. Yeah. Y'all niggas crazy. No, it's really, it's really <laughs> like that, though. It's like, I kind of felt like I didn't belong a little bit, but mm -hmm. no, I'm it, supposed to be everywhere I am. Absolutely. Um, wow. Way to circle oh, back yeah. to that. Wow. Yeah, tanking this I mean, I'm just trying to let you know how much I really use that in my life. I really That's use that. That's crazy. You know? um, you're, you're, a, you're a different kind of talent. And you're such a different kind of talent that, you know, I'm always going to tell you and everybody around you, you have fun. We and me and me and Jay have this thing. It's not gonna kill us. Mm -mm. It's not gonna At kill all. us. Meaning, like you're not about to let it stretch you out. No, we're not. I got a fucking switch. Yeah. Mm. He turned that motherfucker on fast too. Was, you do, why you turn it on so fast? They, well, that's not what was going. Fuck it. <laughs> okay. What and what? I live by it. What's the trigger? It's not even that it's a trigger. It's just more so about. There's just certain things you just can't control. And I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. And there are certain things that will work themselves out. Mm -hmm. And when I see those things, I say, fuck it. Yeah. You want to go eat? Yeah. You want to go? Then, nigga, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're going to do. You want to go to the movies? We're going to go eat. Yeah. You want to play basketball? You wanna, uh, whatever it, these things are, man. Like, oh, shit, I'm going to my son's basketball game. I'm taking my daughter to her soccer. And we pull up right like, along with man, him. Man, and we be, literally, you'll see... <laughs> A village of black men. Yep. And he, like we all go to each other's kids' games. We all, like it just man, I, I need to that. be here right now. Yeah. Like I get it. And it's gonna be some random nigga talking about he got a demo he want me to hear. And I'm like, hey nigga, we at the game. I ain't on that right now. Life is more important. Life. 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 You know what I mean? Life. And I, you know, like I I'm I promote family. Whatever family you create, mm -hmm. have some family in this thing. Yeah. If that's in the business or outside of the business, if that's getting married, if that's having kids, if that's you became best friends with your stylist and they now you guys are family. Yeah. You have to create family within this thing. Mm -hmm. And you have to create people that you really know if I tell them I'm done tomorrow, they still going to take your phone call. Yeah. I got homies that I've been in this business a long time. Mm -hmm. I got homies that then went and done a gang of other shit. And I just tap in like, man, you good? And I've had them tell me, bro, nobody else from the business hit me. Because, mm -hmm. nigga, I ain't, I'm not about the business. Done. Nigga, I'm about, like, I fuck with you as a person. Yeah. Cool. Nigga, you do real estate now? How does shit doing? It's cool. The interest rates up, but they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what the loans look like? What they look like, baby? That's rare. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't care about none of that shit. But I've been able to establish family. We're not blood related, but this is my family. Yeah. Flat out, point blank, period. And so when people even see us, they're like, "How have y'all worked this long together? Maintained your friendship?" It's like because we don't look at it that way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I did, he'll tell you when we kicked this shit off, it was far and few between a lot, a lot, a lot of, a lot of little uh, bookings and yeah, little bags. Little yeah. bags. <laughs> it was little bags. <laughs> he like, Chief, they got, uh, they got about $22. They got $2,200. <laughs> Not $22. Dollars. They got $22 over here and some Happy Meals, nigga, if you come through. and uh, But they said they got bottles too. They got nuggets. If they got, got <laughs> they nuggets, got if they got nuggets, I'll come. You just get that like, barbecue sauce. But it's just, I don't have that. I need to work on that. You got to find it. You have to find I it, especially in that. this in this thing. It's that my we toxic have. trait. I'll just be like, mm, I don't like the way you chew. We can't be friends no more. Damn. Damn. Chew? I mean, you do, yeah. You, I, I chew like a motherfucker. <laughs> I got to chew food down. I got to do better. To the, I do. Itty bitty Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> he smacks. He be on I the phone with me. Gee, they. They want you to come through, dog. I said, listen, pimp. Uh, <laughs> listen, <laughs> pimp. <laughs> Stop yeah, pimp smacking in my <laughs> no, I got to do. Also, too, I just be so focused and, like, working, you know. Your machine. I love my work. I really do. Well, and there's that, too. You love it. And as long as you're in a place where it's no longer a burden on you to where now it's just the love, then that's a good place to be in. Yeah. So... But have Congratulations some fun. on that. Yeah, yeah, but definitely have some fun. Have some fun though. 
Yeah, you I'm don't have to go to strip club. Go, go, I'm going to start. Go, go on Tulum. You know, yeah. go to go to Cabo. You know, run on over to Paris. Yeah. Yeah. And then go to Paris. And then also go to places they're going to play your record so you can hear it. Go to Tanzania. I really want to go to Africa because they be playing... Hours. Go get to the right people. Yeah, I want to go get to the people. Don't wait for a booking. Just go. You heard oh it? my goodness! Are you? You heard that? Are you money long? Are you money long? <laughs> listen, I recognize listen. you from the nails. I recognize. <laughs> <laughs> That's money. That's money. All right, listen. You're R and B. You're R and B through and through. Through and you can do so many things. You can do. Oh, you do a bunch of stuff. Uh, and thank you. For commenting on my daughter's cover. Oh yes! Thank you. Yes, Thank she's you. so beautiful. She was. She coming. She coming. Well, was, I didn't do it because of that. No, no, no. Okay. I, no, I, I knew just you want to let you know that. No, no. But she was like, "What does this mean?" <laughs> <laughs> so you know, she's singing and she's you know she's getting into the space and writing her own songs. That's and amazing. Thing, she plays so. instruments too. She yeah. plays piano, but she she comes from like you know. Uh, Metropolitan Opera and Harlem School of the oh, Arts wow. and Professional Performing Arts School and so she's like she's the whole gift she That's got amazing. stuff I never had um, but thank you it's for that it's amazing that you support her like that too I'm, 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 I'm on whatever she on you know what I'm saying I'm not I don't, I, I don't press because I always feel like your passion is what's going to get you through this not mine mm -hmm. for you if, if you don't have it it don't matter what I say it don't matter what I do you have to have it. Right. So I, I, I'll I, add oxygen and, and, and blow that flame. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When your flame, when you start on fire, cool. I got, I got some oxygen for you to turn the flame up. Mm -hmm. So that's where she is. But I know you know a lot about R&B. So I, I want to see what you really know. You know, and see where you really are in this new segment called Top 5. Hmm. <laughs> We're going to have theme music soon. Okay. <clears throat> I can't afford it right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We still getting that $22. <laughs> <laughs> Your top five R&B artists, male or female, from any time, dead or alive. Avant. Ooh. Come on. Come yeah. on, Avant. That's my guy. I love Avant, man. I'm going to say Faith. Yeah. I had that cassette. From the first, I had the cassette. My my ex, we just talk about other people. He bought me the cassette. Wow, it's a gift. Keep going, keep going. Aaliyah. Mmm. Don't even do that to me. <clears throat> and this might cause some a little uproar because a lot of people might not consider it R and B, but Destiny's Child. What? Why wouldn't they? You kidding? Because me? they're pop. The highest selling R&B group. Because they're pop. I mean, highest R&B selling hey, girls group of all times, right? Am I am I saying this correctly? My favorite. From my knowledge, they are. R&B album is Destiny Fulfilled. <sighs> Look, he over there is so proud. Like, listen, one of my friends is, thinks he is Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> Loves Beyonce. Beyonce. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So that. So I said, what I say? Uh. Avant, mm -hmm. Faith, mm -hmm. Aaliyah, mm -hmm. Destiny's, Destiny's Child. Child. Yeah. Love that. I'm going to say Whitney. Oof. Great way to round it out. Yeah. Love Whitney. Yeah. How could it mean? How could you not? Oof. I love that you said Avant. Songwriting is crazy. I love that you Playlist said Avant. Playlist full of Avant. Vibe songs. just mastered. He mastered his vibe early and Man. was locked in. He's really like an incredible songwriter. I didn't yeah. get it for a long time because we were, you know, we were rivals. We all on the same shows together. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm taking my shirt off and doing the most, and he's not. You know what I'm saying? But his song is still getting great reaction. I'm like, what is going on? What That's is he doing? Funny. Why is it working? And I just had to stop and really listen to what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, he nice. Yeah, he nice. He nice. He just got the captions before it was a thing he had, you know? For sure. I'm sick of your stupid ass. And you're like, come on. Yeah. He's, he's nice. Shout out to my brother. Um, okay, here we go. We're not done. We're not done. Top five is still here. Top five R&B songs. 
At your best. Ooh. The Aaliyah version. Mm. Uh, Contagious. Mm. Uh, Me and my sister sing that every Trailer. Thanksgiving. Word for word. Every thank what? I've I been singing multiple why. parts. Have you seen? Have you seen the the, uh, the, <laughs> the little white man and, 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 the, and the, uh, the black lady singing it uh-uh. at like a gas station? In the- <laughs> oh, oh I've yes. not seen that. I've seen I that. did see that. Oh man, you I guys they acting that. it out and everything. Me, yo, you I'm not gonna say what they own. They own some. They definitely been tooting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's contagious. Um, I and that. I didn't know that was. I heard that Shantae Moore right when she shut. Yes. Up. Shut yeah. up! Yeah, Don't you see two mans is talking? <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. Um, yeah. Contagious, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. At your best, contagious. I'm going to say Butterflies. Mm, amazing record. Michael. Amazing record. Shout out to Marsha. Come on, Marsha. I'm going to say... Officially missing you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to one me, last one. To... You don't have to call. Wow. I don't know what it is about that song. Yeah. But every After time tonight, that song comes on, Susan, nigga, say that. And you know, I, I have to be in the car. I was gonna <laughs> say superstar, but I just. You know, I'm into jams right now. Have you been? Have you been it's to the show in no, Vegas? I have not. Yeah, you gotta go. Yeah, he turned, I have not he been. Turned it up. He's turning up. You, this, this, this is homework. Team, take her to the Usher show. Isn't it about to be over? No. Oh. Look at you he's shaking your head. You trying to you find you out? Huh? <laughs> no, you <laughs> no. just, you just don't want to go outside. They, they, they said gotta it's gotta over. Go. Didn't they say it's over? You are going to the Usher show. I mean, I sit on the couches in the middle. Okay. Or the section right above the couches. I'm a sound guy. He's mixing right there above you. That's where the sound is coming. Well, we are going to Vegas next week. So. I, I think they, or this I week. I don't think they're I don't think they're there right now. Are they? I'm not sure. I don't think they're right now. But you have It's fine. Team? Yeah. All right. That's your not y'all nodding. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We ganging up on you now. Okay. <laughs> we the phone police. We're gonna make sure right. you get out in these streets. <laughs> okay, so that's the that's the top five there. That's top five there. Okay, okay, okay. Um we're gonna build R and B Voltron. Okay? We're gonna build your the best R and B singer you can build. From the vocals, from the performance style to the styling to the passion of the artist. Who are you getting the vocals from to build your R and B artist? Who am I gonna take? Ooh. Who the lead singer? Mm-hmm. Who is the Who lead singer? Who got it? Kelly Price. Yeah. Yeah. You're trying to whoop a nigga. <laughs> I'm taking Kelly's vocals for sure. Cause Kelly, she know how to stack. Kelly be whooping. She knows how to stack. Have you ever just talked to Kelly Price? Um, no, I did work with her though before. She she's so smart. She's very, very tuned into her gift. Mm. Like I've watched her lead background singers into a special place that they weren't at until she started talking and leading them. And it just got special real fast. I can believe that. Okay. I don't know why. I just want to scream out, Kelly, take this phone. But <laughs> Kelly, take his phone. <laughs> he was my life. Okay. Uh, keep going. Okay. We got the vocal from Kelly Price. Good Lord almighty. Okay. Performance style on stage. Vocals is Kelly Price. The performance is Janet. Mm. Yeah. Ain't nobody touching her. Like she's Janet's, talk about. She's it. the originator. She's talk it. about it. She's the originator. She's it. She's the originator. What you yeah, had something to say? Really? Oh, your 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 Beyonce. <laughs> 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 they gonna they gonna stab you in the car. <laughs> 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 Beyonce came from somewhere. Yeah, came so Kelly Janet. Price with Janet. Okay. okay. Ooh, Kelly Price, Price with Janet. Janet. Golly. Um, styling, what you want the artist to look like. Hmm. Sierra, but Sierra Wilson. Hmm. Okay. I see where you're I going. See with you yeah, I see what you did there. Yeah, I see where you're going. I like what you did there. Yeah. Very fly. Very yeah. fly. Very, fly. Very rich. Very rich, Very rich. fly. Re- refined. Okay. 
Still do leg. Still do a little leg if you need to see it. Because it's in shape. Because mm-hmm. it's in shape leg. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exclusive yeah. pieces. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Classy, She's eating well. clean. She's eating well. Yeah. Diet is good. The yeah. money's long. The money's long. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I see what you did. Who are you getting the passion from? The heart of the artist. Diddy. Wow. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you listen. are not wrong. Yeah. You talk all. about a nigga that's going to uh, get to it. He going to get to it. Who he going to get to it? He got a different type of passion. Kelly voice, Janet performing, stage presence, Sierra Wilson styling, Diddy's passion. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. When he wants something, he going to get it. Yeah, he yeah. going to get it. Period. And everybody around him might as well get on board. I like what yeah, you did there. Yeah, that's a dope Voltron. I like what you did there. That's it? That's I like, it. My, my segment. No, that though. ain't it. Though. That ain't it, though. That yeah, ain't it. Ain't it. You, you got through that. Yeah. You got through that. Okay. But we, you know, you, okay, you know we hit it. Jump on it. Yeah. So we got this, this, you know, this, this <clears> segment. <throat> it's called I Ain't Saying No Names. It's very important. Okay. The story can either be funny or fucked up or funny and fucked up. The only rule is you can't say no names. Mm. Get your shit off, okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get your shit off. Yeah. Um, Introduce the dog. Introduce it. This is Money Longs. I ain't saying no names. Okay. Well, this particular person uh, grew up loving superhero to me. And so when I met them, uh, highly disappointed. Highly disappointed. This person really just wanted me for my songs. I wanted to, you know, get be mentored. Like, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, my god, you yeah, know? yeah. Several run-ins <laughs> where we just did not gel. At one point, you know, I walk into this room and they start screaming, "You're a fake ass bitch!" Like, wilding, and I'm just like, oh my god. Everybody knows who this person is, so it was very embarrassing. So I just tend to stay away. Every time I see this person outside, I stay away. So fast forward to this Grammy party. We have similar team. Um, Without saying too much because it'll give it away. Mm -hmm. But we have a similar team. We're at this place. And I feel these eyes. I feel like I'm being stared at. I'm standing in my circle. I'm talking. And I look, sure enough, grilling me, ice grilling me, just, so I kind of like hide, <laughs> you know, <laughs> behind the person that I was talking to. And I'm like, is this really happening? <laughs> you know what? So I do it again. Look, same thing. Ice grilling me. And that's how the night went, you know. You just going from here to here? Literally, I'm moving around the room and I keep feeling the eyes until it got to a place where, you know, there's some people in this business or in the world, really, who just cannot stand not being recognized. Like the, don't you know who I am? Energy. It was very much that. It was like, okay, well, I followed you around this whole party. You're not going to acknowledge me, even though I'm looking you dead in your eyes. Now I'm going to stand right in front of you. Oh, you shit. Know? And I'm not going to speak to you. I'm not going to say nothing to you. I'm just going to look at you. And yeah, it was very, very, very awkward. I didn't say nothing either. I was just like, this cannot be real. This is a real. Uh, all st- night stare off. All the entire party literally followed me around the first floor. I go upstairs, follow me up there. <laughs> like, yeah. And this is one of my heroes. It's this crazy. business will do that to you sometimes. Very disappointing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I just don't even want to meet nobody. No, stop. No, no, stop. I, I'm no, just being honest. Like, I, just, you, you I don't. You still got to meet. I don't you remember how nice that guy was when you met you him? Still gotta, if there are a lot of people like Yeah, us. but I mean, I feel like you met me. Like, you know what I'm saying? You you offered your energy first. But, but there are okay. a lot of people okay. like us. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. All right, all right. A lot of people like us. I like, promise. imagine if I would have went up to you and like... And you was like, not right now. Then I would have had a totally different story. It would have been the same energy. 
Okay, but you're uh, you're you. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's not like that. Be open yeah. to people being like us. <laughs> nah, champ. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. We're gonna make sure we outside when you outside. Yeah, we're gonna be outside when you outside. We're gonna, that we, would we gonna help. help. Yeah. We're gonna start making sure we outside when you that outside. Like, help. Hey, you outside? And they start staring. We... <laughs> yeah, no. You got a problem was, here? Uh, it was very, very awkward. Well, listen. You are doing a thing. You are you are living out a real dream, and and not just yours. All the people um, that are connected to you, that are cheering for you, that are being inspired by you, by you, um, that will eventually want to, not even just buy a ticket, but want to be you, at some point. You are you are a living a dream. You are a living dream, and we mm-hmm. salute you. We give you flowers. We give you ammunition. We give you encouragement. We give you brotherhood. Anything you need, we 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 got you. Thank you. We got you. Thank I rock you with so you for much. real. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Come on now, uh, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> my name is Tank. I'm Jay Valentine, and this has been the R&B Money Podcast, the authority on all things R&B. Yeah. We're gonna have some fun in the future. We're going to Usher shows. <laughs> We're going on vacations. We're going to enjoy um, success Amen. because she has been absolutely successful and will continue to be successful. Ladies and gentlemen, money long. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. R&B money.